Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. Now in today's video, we're going to be taking a look at another unofficial Windows version. Now as I always say in these videos, this right here is one of the most popular series that I do on this channel. And I have an entire playlist that will be up in the cards right now of other videos relating to this topic of unofficial Windows versions. But in today's video, we're going to be taking a look at something that we don't usually take a look at. Something that we haven't really taken a, a look at very often on this channel. And that is an unofficial version of Windows Vista. This video is sponsored by Wondershare Recoverit, a powerful tool that enables you to easily recover deleted files from your Windows or Mac OS based machine. Check out the link in this video's description for more information. And this one right here is called Vista Lite. And as you can probably guess, uh, this is very similar to both XP Micro and Tiny7 in that it is a minimalized light version of Windows Vista that is designed to run on computers with a smaller hard drive or on something that you don't really need a lot of the extra programs to actually use the computer. Now this was actually submitted to me by a viewer. This was actually made by a viewer of this channel named Alex. And um, if he wants me to, I'm going to go ahead and actually put his uh, you know, Twitter profile or his website or something like that if he has one. But he actually sent me an email um, about a week or so ago. And he kind of told me about uh, this whole project. He's actually a fellow YouTuber as well. He's, he's been on YouTube for about six years. And he told me that he's been working on this whole project called Vista Light. And uh, he claims that it runs on anything as long as you have 256 megs of RAM, a DirectX 9 capable graphics card. And this ISO file right here, uh, this person has removed enough to get it down to 1.6 gigabytes, which is about one gigabyte less than a standard Windows Vista ISO, which is about 2.5 gigabytes. And like most of the people that make these minimalized versions of Windows, they go in and remove uh, you know, things sort of like extra features and, uh, you know, things like that. This person has actually removed Internet Explorer from the system, which is going to be pretty interesting to actually take a look at. Um, and you'll notice that the whole setup, it's not automated. You still have to go through and actually uh, choose where you want to install it, but it does skip past the whole license agreement phase. And as you're going to see in the next portion of, of the setup, there is a lot of other things that have been removed from that as well. It doesn't ask you for a product key, for example. And um, yeah, so there's just a lot of you know things that he's done in here to actually make the setup a little bit faster, although it's not completely automated and um, unattended as we've seen in some of the other unofficial windows versions that we've taken a look at on this channel and uh, this was actually created um, using a program called VLite, which we are actually going to take a look at in a future video uh, if you guys want to see that. And it's very similar to both NT Lite and uh, N Lite, but it's just for making your own customized version of Windows Vista. So if you guys want to, you know, see that in a future video, be sure to let me know down in, in the comments below. I have noticed the first time that I installed this to kind of explore it myself, um, it does take a little bit of time on the last phase of the installation where it says completing installation. It does take a little bit of time uh, to actually finish up here it was on this screen for I would say about five minutes so I'm just going to go ahead and let it you know finish doing this and I will come back once we are at the next portion of the setup okay so we've just restarted here and the system should be loading into the next portion of the setup where it's going to ask us for things like our username and our password and our computer name you know things that you guys have probably seen before I mean I'm sure most of you guys are watching this video have installed Windows Vista at least one or two times um, um, so this is it right here, you know, this looks pretty standard, not a whole lot of modification done uh, visually, and that is one thing also that I've seen in a lot of these unofficial um, minimalized versions of Windows, is there's usually not a whole lot of visual changes in the sense that like, you know, say, you know, when we took a look at XP Gold Edition or Windows 8 Green Edition or any one of those, those have a lot more uh, visual changes in them, you know, Windows XP Gold is a perfect example of that, I mean, that thing was just you know, the entire uh, installer, the whole setup process was completely changed and it looked way different. Uh, these ones right here, you know, they are, you know, the whole goal of them, you know, the whole goal of this Vista Lite one right here is trying to minimize Windows Vista, make it take up less space on your hard drive and use less system resources. So usually you're not going to see a whole lot of visual changes. We're not going to put a password and let's go ahead and choose the goldfish right here. Oh, that looks pretty cool. And we're going to call this uh, just Vista. And we're going to go ahead and choose actually a different desktop background. Let's go ahead and go with this one here. This looks pretty cool. We're going to hit next. We're just going to set this as a public network. 
and hit start and that is it so you'll see it doesn't ask you for your product key although i think it usually does that in the uh, earlier portion of the setup you know it doesn't ask you for your product key and it's, it's just you know it kind of tones down a lot of the uh, user prompts let's wait for the startup sound to play here uh, it, it definitely does tone down a lot of the user prompts which is very nice but like i said it's still not a hundred percent automated you also may have been able to tell on the login screen there that this is based off of the home premium variant of Windows Vista. Uh, so there you go. It's not home basic. You are still going to get arrow in here, which is pretty nice. That was one of the things that was kept in here. All right, so we are back. I went ahead and actually installed VMware tools just so that you guys can actually see everything in a much better resolution here. And uh, yeah, so like I said before, you know, there's not a whole lot uh, of visual changes done to the actual desktop or anything like that. What we can do is actually um, enable arrow. We can go ahead and do that here. Let's go into uh, color and appearance and let's actually change this over to Windows arrow. Uh, now I gave this machine uh, a, a dual core processor and two gigs of RAM. So it's definitely capable of um, running Arrow pretty decently here. So there you go, Arrow is something that he did not actually cut from the system, but is definitely something that you could cut if you wanted to run this on like lower end hardware and didn't really need, um, you know, a visual, like, you know, cool looking interface. I mean, Arrow is basically just there for looks. Yeah, it is pretty cool, but you don't actually need it um, to use the system. So that is something that um, maybe VLET doesn't allow you to remove that, I'm not sure, but uh, it, it was still left in here. Now, we're going to go ahead and start off with the largest change that he's made here, and that is the removal of Internet Explorer and I believe uh, Windows Mail as well. Now, I'm sure I hear a lot of you cheering out there that, yeah, Internet Explorer is not in here. Yes, it is gone. But that means that there's no built-in web browser. So literally, if you go and click on this Internet thing right here, you know, the Internet shortcut in the Start menu, it's going to come up and just tell you um, it's unavailable, like I can't find this, you know, because Internet Explorer is, is not here on the system. So we're going to go ahead and just leave it in the list for now. But he's also removed the Internet Explorer engine as well. So I believe that means that, you know, the email uh, client, I, I believe, relies on the Internet Explorer engine. So that's why that it is also uh, not not in here as well. So yes, there is literally no web browser. So you are going to have to like if you're in a VM here, you would have to actually copy over a like, you know, Firefox, um, which I don't even think Firefox supports Vista anymore. But uh, you're you would have to find a, you know, a web browser that supports Vista or get like an older version of Chrome or Firefox. And um, you know, copy it over here, or if you were doing this on like a physical machine, you'd have to physically get like a you know USB flash drive or a CD and copy it over there. So that is a, a minor inconvenience. Um, it can be like a major one if you want to you know use this kind of get it installed and just go browsing the internet. Uh, you unfortunately cannot do that right out of the box. So that is kind of the largest change that he's made. But he's also removed some other things. Um, if we go into the all programs view here, you'll see that there's you know it's much uh, smaller than it normally would be. We do still have some extra things like, um, we do still have the shortcut to Windows Live Messenger, uh, Windows Calendar is still here, DVD Maker, um, Media Player, Movie Maker, and Photo Gallery. These things are all still here. They are pretty nice. Honestly, they could have probably uh, been removed, but it might just be one of those things that, that you know, VLite, this was created using this uh, this VLite program. And I personally haven't taken a look at that program yet, but I, as I mentioned before, I wanna do it in a future video if you guys wanna see that. Um, but I'm not sure if VLite has like a set of, you know, uh, limitations. It might have things that, you know, you can't remove that doesn't allow you to remove. So that might have been the case here, but we'll actually take a look at that in a separate video. Um, under accessories here, um, you'll see we still have uh, most of the uh, accessories are still here. Uh, system tools, everything looks to be intact. We also have the tablet PC uh, additions as well. I don't think this normally comes with Windows Vista, especially home premium, but it is in here, so it might have been actually added in here, although I could be totally wrong about that. I just don't remember this um, being in, because I actually used Vista home premium on uh, a PC I got in 2008. It was like an HP uh, desktop machine, and I don't remember, um, I think Sticky Notes was in it. I don't remember the tablet PC input panel and the Windows Journal being in there, but I might just have totally you know, forgotten about it. Um, extras and upgrades, we have uh, the Windows Anytime Upgrade tool, uh, Windows Marketplace, we actually have a shortcut to the Windows website. And games, all of the games are in here. Now Windows Vista, I don't believe, came with any of the internet games, so those are not in here, but all of the standard games, including Inkball, 
uh, are in here as well. But one thing you are you don't see is the media center. The Windows Media Center has been removed, and uh, that is definitely a huge thing. You know, that was kind of a, a, a big introduction in Windows Vista was the redesigned Media Center. Uh, that is not in here at all. So that has been completely removed again, just to save space. You know, something that I'm seeing is he's actually removed some things that are kind of necessary to the system, like Internet Explorer. So he's also removed Windows Defender as well if you see i try to type in uh, defender here if i go to the control panel there's not going to be a setting for windows defender in here at all i can uh, i can search for that so that has been completely removed as well now you can obviously and i would recommend obviously going and downloading a third-party antivirus but again you can't do that without a web browser which doesn't come with the system either so you're you're basically gonna have to you know copy some files over to the system regardless of if you want to use the internet or not because it's just a a, a good idea to have a um, antivirus on your system. It doesn't really hurt if you get one that is both lightweight and effective. Um, so there you go, that has also been removed as well. Everything else in the control panel appears to be intact. We can go into uh, programs and features and you can see that we're very, very limited here as well. Um, there's only one thing that comes standard and that is a, a Visual C++ 2008 redistributable and obviously I installed VMware tools so that is going to be in here. He also removes the Windows firewall as well. That is again a setting in, uh, in the control panel um, so that's something else that has been completely removed so you would have to actually go and get um, a you know a separate firewall. You'll also notice in here one other major difference and that is Windows Update. Windows Update, the shortcut to it is still here, but it just has the generic folder icon. And when you double click on it, it literally doesn't do anything. So you see if I double click on card space here, it actually tries to open it up. Um, we're just going to go ahead and uh, get out of this. But Windows Update has been completely removed from the system as well. So that is something that, and I'm just going to go ahead and take a wild guess here. I'm, I don't think he mentions any of this in his email. Um, but I'm just going to take a just take a wild guess. This was kind of designed for somebody who was running this either in a VM or on a computer that didn't want to connect it to the internet and just wanted to use this as kind of a, a local machine to kind of just mess around with Windows Vista, not actually get on the internet because there's no internet browser, there's no mail client, there's no firewall, there's no antivirus, and there's no Windows update. All of those things um, kind of revolve around the internet. You know, it, it would probably be good to have an antivirus on this computer regardless of if you were using the internet or not, but it's it's definitely better to have if you're browsing the internet and, you know, constantly downloading files. So yeah, I'm just going to guess that that's probably what Alex designed this for, probably just for an a offline usage case. Which is definitely still pretty cool. I don't think we've actually taken a look at anything like that in this series before. Something that is specifically designed for offline users. I mean, I'm pretty certain that every single other version of, or uh, unofficial Windows version that we've taken a look at, um, pretty much comes with a web browser and comes with things like a firewall. They might add an additional web browser. Um, so this is actually pretty cool, to be totally honest with you. I just haven't seen... Uh, something you know designed for that usage case before but there you have it that is a very very brief look at Vista Lite I want to give a huge thank you to Alex for actually sending this out to me um, he actually you know sent me this email like I said a week or so ago and if he wants me to I'm gonna go ahead and actually contact him before that I publish this video if he wants me to I will leave his channel link or you know his uh, website link if he has one down below so that you guys can actually go over to his channel um, he might have some more videos on you know this uh, particular option operating system that he made or maybe some of his other projects if you guys want to see that so be sure to go and actually check him out but before we head out of here i want to give a huge thanks to wondershare recover it for sponsoring today's video have you ever accidentally deleted an important document picture or video file from your computer if so, Recover It might be able to help. This program can help you recover deleted files even after they have been permanently deleted from the recycle bin. The application itself is pretty simple to use. All you have to do is download it from the link in this video's description and open it up and choose the drive that you want to recover data from. Or specify a specific folder if you know the former location of whatever you're trying to recover. From there, just let the program do its thing. Once the scan finishes, all you have to do is scroll through the list of files until you find the one that you're looking for. Once you've found it, just check it and hit recover. It's that simple. Wondershare has both a Windows and Mac OS version of the program and offer a free version of the program so that you can try it out before you actually buy it. Check out the link in the video description for more information.
I just want to thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, definitely be sure to give it a thumbs up. Be sure to get subscribed down below and turn on those channel notifications if you haven't already to uh, get notified whenever that I upload a new video, which I do every single week on this channel. And um, also be sure to just drop me a comment down below and, you know, letting me know if you guys enjoyed this video, if you guys want to see more like it, and uh, if you guys just have any, you know, general questions, comments, or, you know, concerns, I guess, if you have those, um, be sure to leave them down below as I always enjoy reading what you guys have to say. And as always, guys, I will see you all in the next video.